Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. And once again, we are live at the Build studio in New York City. Man, have I got a hell of a lineup for you on this one. Uh, in, on March 7th, right, the Paramount Network is set to premiere its pitch black comedy anthology series based on the 1988 cult classic, Heathers. Pitch black doesn't do this thing justice, man. It is dark, but in the best way. Uh, Heathers takes us back to Westerberg and does a fantastic job of giving us a bunch of stuff we haven't seen before, but still in a vaguely familiar context. And on top of that, you got super complex characters, crazy fashion, gasp-worthy insults. In short, this is a damn good show, people. Now, uh, as you can imagine, I'm pretty stoked because I got the whole cast here. Uh, Grace Victoria Cox, James Scully, and the Heathers themselves, Melanie Field, Brendan Scannell, and Jasmine Matthews is here. How about that, guys? That's pretty exciting, right? Right, Noble? I see you. <laughs> All right, man, so look, we're going to bring him out in a second. We're going to do this thing and talk all about the show. But before we do any of that, I believe we've got the trailer. Uh, so, Luke, let's go ahead and run that clip. Dear Diary, Yesterday's lunchtime poll asked, who are you? When it finally came my turn, Heather C. turned to me and said, well, suck my third nipple. If it isn't Veronica Sawyer, how Banana Republic. It's ironic, Heather. We're not doing irony anymore. Keep up. Yeah, keep up. Shut up, Heather. Yeah, shut up, Heather. Heather, only I tell Heather shut up. Oh, yeah. In the spot, I came to have fun. Dressed to the nine, so they know I'm number one. Fat kids can be popular. The preferred term is body positive. What about the Asian kids? And the gender queer? Bang! Obviously, the gays and Jews are over. She looks like if Jim Henson got in one last puppet before he died. Gosh, Heather. Super mean way to treat the mentally challenged. Jesus. Who is this? I'm JD. I like your whole rebel thing. Let's snort Adderall. Make out. Until Heather. What? Mm. You can't go one night without your domestic terrorist boyfriend. He's a teenage Charles Manson. What a tragedy. Tragedy? He was only paralyzed from the waist down. Um, your boyfriend is a loser. You're jealous, fatty. You're about to get flamed. So why do you hang out with her? It's high school. Why do we do anything that we do? I was hoping all the sex you're having would finally deep dick the quote of the day out of you, but I guess not. You were nothing before you met me. I wish Heather Chandler would just die so that I can finally be free. Whatever you do, make sure it matters. Ooh la la. Don't think of it like you're hurting, Heather. Think of it like you're helping everyone else. Oh my clit. God. We're gonna be late for school. Heather Chandler killed herself this morning. She certainly didn't look suicidal. Her skin was flawless. Mm. Oh man, everybody put your hands together, make some noise for the cast of Heathers. Grace Victoria Cox, James Scully, Felony Field, Brennan Scannell, Jasmine Matthews, please, everybody. Please. This show. God damn, I got to tell everybody backstage and meet with you individually and tell you I really dug this show and that it is out of its mind dark and so much fun. I'm excited to dig into this. We're going to get into the show and talk all about it. But first of all, congratulations, guys. This is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And second of all, uh, how the hell are you all doing? How's press going? How are you right now? How are you feeling on this ride so far? Let's go around. Open forum. Great. How's everybody doing? Yeah, you're super nice. You guys seem really nice. <laughs> Everything's good. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I, I mean... It's just really, really exciting um, <laughs> and incredibly nerve wracking. Um, it's like, it's, for personally, it's my first time going through this. I know for many of us it is. And so there's always nerves with sharing what we've worked on, but I think we're all really, really excited about it. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, woo, on the inside. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and like going outside and seeing like paparazzi and people calling my name, I'm like, me? You want me? Yeah, cool. Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm just happy I got to do it with this group of people. They're the nicest, best people. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. You too, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just thriving. I don't know. I feel <laughs> confident. I feel like I've done this a hundred times. Let's do it. You, you've been preparing your whole life for this. You're Absolutely. Ready. Staring at the mirror all the time. <laughs> How long have you 
long ago did you guys uh, wrap up production? Like, has it been a long time since you've had a chance to get together as a group and see each other and all that? And, and eh, we wrapped like production in October. Okay. Um, but we've seen each other a couple times since then for events like this. Floating but we shot the pilot in November of 2016. Uh, very important time for our country, um, but also very important time for us. <laughs> And uh, so it's been, and it's been a year and a half, and I'm just excited for people to see it. For sure. Well, that's that's always the best part, right? You put all this this time and effort into it. You you forge these new families. You you pour yourself literally into this project, and now you have to sort of release it to the world, and and it becomes it's not yours anymore. Now it belongs to the rest of the universe. Uh, what what are your emotions going into that moment? I know the press is all new for you, but something this magnitude, this level, what what's it been like leading up to this? Well, it is weird, yeah, because you're there and you're filming it, and it's it feels especially with this group. It feels like summer camp. You're just like going to work every day, blowing shit up, killing people. And then you realize. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> you realize, like, oh, people are gonna, you were recording that. People are going to see it. Um, but like you said, it's not ours anymore. It's sort of once it's released, it belongs to the fans um, or the haters, whatever they choose to be. And uh, that's, you know, it's their journey to go on now. It's kind of like you almost forget that once you're done with it, people could actually not like it. I'm like, wait, you, you, you what? <laughs> I'm like, at least give it a fair chance before you, you know, put place judgment on it. But I do understand it's an original cult classic. I get that. Just hold your horses real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. That's always a challenge when, when you pull from something that is a cult classic or beloved. I mean, it, it's really hard because there is an audience out there that already has preconceived notions of what this thing should be. But um, but as someone who's seen the, at least the first three episodes, you are 100% right. Guys, strap in and give this thing a chance and watch it because it is it is not what you think it is. I'm telling you right now, it's fantastic. Let's go Let's go back a little bit, though, and let's talk about the beginning. How'd uh, the easy one, how'd you guys get involved? Some of you guys auditioned together. How, how did it all come together? I want to hear all the fun stories, wherever you want to start. So we all have really unique audition stories, actually, that we've shared Perfect. with each other. Um, I auditioned, so I was living in New York at the time, so I got a self-tape audition from my manager and um, read the script, and just, like, one night in my apartment in Harlem, put myself on tape for the role, and then they sent it off to uh, the folks in L.A., and they really liked it, and I met with the director, like, a couple days, or maybe a week later, and then um, they actually made the offer for me to play the part from the self-tape. So I was really lucky. It was kind of like the fast track to Heather Chandler. And I Which like, never <laughs> happened. It's only Must be nice. Melanie, <laughs> I mean, Melanie I is incredible. It, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, that was my story. Uh, other, wh how about you? How, how did you get involved? Um, so I had like the normal actor experience with auditioning. Then you, you do a callback and then my final callback, which is called like your test, yeah. was actually a chemistry read, and I did it with James. And I remember we we finished our audition, and then we walked into the hall, and we just looked at each other, and we were like, "You're, You're so, so good." good. <laughs> yeah. So I felt like even if even if I didn't get it, I was sure that he he was the JD. For sure. But I could not have been JD to any other Veronica than you. Aww. That's I'm not even just saying that to be gross and cute because we're live <laughs> right now. That's real. And yeah, it was, I actually, every time I submitted to a new level of the audition process, I was like, I'm never going to hear about this job ever again. So it was really a pleasant surprise. And then, you know, I got to test and really all of the actors who were there, obviously notably Grace, were just insanely talented. And I was just flattered to be there. Um, but then I walked out, and like 10 minutes later, they called me and offered me the role. And then I called my mom, and I think I just like cried for 45 minutes. <laughs> that is a really important skill, at, not the crying part. The, uh, I mean, that is valuable. Too. Yeah, that is valuable. Why. But the but the ability to be like, never going to hear from them again, and kind of just keep moving, right? Looking back, now that you did hear from them, you are in the show very much so, uh, do you recall anything that maybe was different or something that you just didn't perceive at the time, but upon reflection, like, oh, maybe I didn't realize it, but I, they were calling me back. I, didn't I could have seen it then that they were going to call me back versus all those other ones. To be honest, I think the thing that everyone thought I was crazy, everyone thought I was really legitimately criminally insane because all that they had experienced of me was me doing the JD sides. 
And so I was like, why does everybody seem like slightly uncomfortable? They must just really not be feeling me as an actor. <laughs> um, and then Jason, who's the showrunner, actually took me out in the hallway immediately after my last audition. And we had this conversation in which I was like, okay, you have to be as cool and impressive as you've ever been in your life, talking to Jason right now. It ended up being probably a really boring conversation for him. But that later, he told me after the fact, he was like, yeah, I was just checking that you weren't, you know, actually an insane person. <laughs> I was just making sure you weren't gonna murder anybody in the cast. Um, so yeah, I guess that moment was when I really shone. Perfect. Uh, Brendan Jasmine, I didn't get to hear your stories uh, yet. For me, um, I was at I was at a friend's birthday party in LA, and um, <laughs> I got a text from that friend like the next day, and he was like, "Hey, have you heard of the Heather's reboot?" And I was like, "That sounds like a horrible idea. Um, why are they remaking it? That's stupid." Uh, and he was like, "There's a really good part for you in it." And I was like, "I would love to hear more." <laughs> Um, and I guess Jason Monster. had been at that party and they were having a hard time casting Heather Duke and um, he was like, we just need someone like that. And my friend Jordan was like, oh, that's Brendan. He's kind of funny. Um, and then I went in and when I did my test, I was the only person they brought in and um, they gave me like a new side, which was really cute. And the side was just like, Brendan, you got the part. And so that was nice. I also called my mom and wept. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I kind of had no um, time to weep. As Melanie had the fast track, I had the really slow track. Um, <laughs> I was in New York. It was like one of my first jobs that, or gigs that I was auditioning for. And um, I auditioned for it, and casting got back to us and kind of passed over me. They were like, she's kind of older, and she's not really funny, so pass. I was like, OK. Uh, so kind of forgot about it, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and then maybe a couple of weeks later, uh, my manager was like, you'll never believe what we just got in the in email. And I was like, well, what is it? And he's like, Heather's, they want to do a callback with you. I was like. Really? Okay. I think that was maybe a Wednesday, and the callback was over Skype with uh, the showrunner Jason McAuliffe and Leslie Headland, who was the director. And um, I think that was a what Wednesday, and then Friday they were like, "They want you. They want to fly you out to L.A. on Saturday." Okay, let's go. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> That's yeah. All right. Uh, let's do real quick rapid fire around the horn. You don't have to give me specifics, but were you born before or after Heather's the original came out? We're gonna start, Jasmine. I'm gonna start with you. Go. Before or after? After. After? After. After? Around the same time. Around the same. Okay. After? I mean, maybe a little after. Maybe, maybe like, by, what, like by a month? Hard after? to say. Hard to say. I'm very close to the same time. Very close. Within <laughs> five or ten years of that. <laughs> close to the same time. Somewhere I'm very much there. before. Go on. Go on. Oh, after. After? After. Okay. You jerks, just shut up. <laughs> you could have lied. He Hello? <laughs> No, no, and I, I only bring it up because I'm curious now, okay, looking back what your personal relationship is with that original film, and did you go back to it, did you avoid it? Like, I'm sure everybody had a different approach into how you worked with that source material. So uh, we can start uh, here and go around, however you want to do it, but I'm very curious everybody's different uh, perspective on the original. Uh, Brendan, we kind of got a window into yours hearing your audition story. So if you want to start. I, I actually, I hadn't seen the movie since um, I was like a teenager when Mean Girls came out and I had one of those hip friends who was like, oh, Mean Girls is basically just a ripoff of Heathers. Um, and I loved Mean Girls. So then I watched Heathers because I was influenced by this friend. And um, so then, but I hadn't really seen it since. And then when I got the audition notice in my inbox, it, it was on Netflix at the time and still is. And um, so I watched it uh, then, and but I haven't watched it since, mostly because I wanted to stay away from it um, and not necessarily be too influenced by it. For sure. And so uh, let's go. Was everybody else sort of on the same page? Did you stay away? Did you give it a glance? Like, what 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 was your approach to the film? Yeah, I watched it. Uh, of course, when I did the audition right before, and then when I found out I booked the job, I watched it one more time just to make sure I had the, the tone established and everything. But after that, I kind of stayed away from it because I didn't want to be influenced by, you know, the performances in the show. I had seen it. Oh, I had seen it, but my my relationship with it was more through the musical because I'm a musical theater nerd, and I grew up in the theater and doing musicals, so I knew Heather's yeah. the musical, and was, oh, it's based on that movie. Um, and then when I got the audition, I remember I sat down to watch it before I put myself on tape because I wanted to re-familiarize myself with it. And then I didn't stay away from it, actually. I watched it quite a few times through the process. Um, it just, like, 
you know, Heather Chandler in our version is is similar, but also very different from the original. And but I, I kept going back to the original for tone and style, like because our our show really pays homage to that. And so I just yeah, every once in a while I just throw it on and be like, oh, 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 yeah, that line or that moment, and it just helped to inspire me as we went along. But yeah. There were also moments in it where we'd be shooting where um, one of the writers would be like, oh, and this line is in the movie, in case you didn't know. And so they would, if we had like a new spin on that, they'd be like, that's actually one you might want to do kind of an older spin on, that kind of thing. Interesting. Or just like really hitting those lines. Yeah. yeah. And Grace, how'd you? Yeah. Um, I mean, I had seen the original when I was like 11, maybe. Yeah. Too early. <laughs> it really scared me. <laughs> Um, and then I watched it again when I found out I was auditioning for this role and I was so excited. It immediately made me feel like, oh my God, I really, really want to do this. Yeah. Um, but then once I found out that I booked it, I tried to kind of stay away from it just because, I mean, Winona Ryder is yeah. like iconic as Veronica yeah. and I just didn't want to fall into that trap of comparing myself to her sure. too much because, I mean, she's brilliant and perfect and I just wanted to try to make it my own as much as I could for sure I can't yeah fathom how intimidating that could be right so yeah. you gotta yeah it's nerve-wracking well you make it look really easy I'll tell you that right <laughs> thank now thank you, so you feel pretty good about it James I didn't get to hear did you have anything you I want? mean yeah, yeah basically same the same um and you know during the audition process it became really clear to me that Jason and Leslie and the producers understood that they weren't really like looking for just another Winona and Christian. They were like, that's happened and we're not gonna be able to do that because you know, they did that and that was their thing. Um, so I didn't watch it after I got the role. Um, Jason, our showrunner, has like an encyclopedic knowledge of Heather's. I mean, the show, in probably in every moment, there's, besides obviously that it's a remake, but there's like hidden messages, layers upon layers of references to the film. And so I knew that like anything I needed, I could just like go to them and the writers and the directors for. Um, and yeah, and I really didn't wanna, I didn't wanna be accused of trying to be Christian Slater. So I <laughs> let him exist in his iconic, you know. Sure. You know, we uh, you mentioned this uh, just a second ago that there are in paying uh, homage there. There's there's some lines that are definitely from the original they throw in there, but there's also tons of new, I think, destined to be iconic lines as well, insults, things of that nature. I'm wondering two things: one, do, do you have a favorite line? We'll go around again. If the one that stands out that you remember the most, or two, Brendan, especially, or uh, honestly, any of you, was there ever a line where you're like, I don't know if I can say that. That is insane. You want me to say what? How do you want me to read this? Like, because some of these lines. Uh, I called them gasp-worthy earlier. They really are. You'll say them and be like, oh. like, it takes your breath away. They're pretty crazy. Uh, so, yeah, favorite line or anything that stands out from working on the show? Anything you remember? Something that took your breath away while you were reading it? I get to call, I get to call a character na whose name is Jesus Julie, and I get to call her a twisty-fingered clit witch. That's <laughs> one of them. Uh, like, twisty-fingered oh clit witch, yeah. That was one that stood out for sure. Uh, is that kind of everybody standout line? I have so many. I, I, I really ton, can't yeah. pick. <laughs> Amazing line. Can't pick one. Um, jacuzzi turd. Uh, Ugg boot latte was one of my favorites from the pilot. Um, purse turds. I call. It, I have a turd thing. I guess later. And there were definitely turd cake. Yeah. There were definitely moments in the table reads where. Jason, our creator, would be kind of standing in the back of the room, and we were reading all the scripts for the first time at the table read. So yeah. we were all in it together, and we were, so we were just reading through, and I would say something or read slightly ahead, and before I said it, I would just look at him and be like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I have to say this? I mean, it was just like shock-worthy stuff. Some of it's like um, giveaways, so I won't yeah, say yeah, it, but sure, there yeah. were certain ones that popped out that I was just like, I feel like I'm going to get letters from like <laughs> institutions or like... you." You're a criminal. <laughs> like, I don't even know. <laughs> I was like, oh no, my, my line kept being on, on set. I'd be like, we're going to get arrested. Like, <laughs> we're going to get a knock on the door. Because it is, it's really bold. And they were like, and that's how you know we're doing it right. Yeah. That's, oh, totally. That's, that's exactly what <laughs> we're doing. I was like, take for. me down, I dare you. <laughs> Uh, you, at the table read, did you say you had all of it at once? Did you guys know the whole story or no? Like how much, because your characters, I've only seen three episodes and they go on such a journey in just those three. So I can't even fathom w w what's in store for the other, what is it, seven? I think there's 10 episodes total, right guys? So yeah, so how much of that did you know going in? How much did they reveal to you about your character starting? We, um, oh, go for it, Grace. 
I was just going to say none of it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, pretty much. And then, like, while we were filming, we would get new scripts. By far, though, the funnest was uh, the script for the last episode. Um, They didn't... They would usually send them out to us two days before the um, table read, so we would just, like, you know, have a chance um, to digest and absorb. But the script for the season finale, we didn't see... We sat down, and it was our first time reading it. And as you can imagine, it's an eventful um, 47 minutes. Uh, so that was that was really, really fun. Um, like, finding out really what was gonna happen. But no, and I mean, especially in a show like this, you're like, am I gonna, like, am I gonna survive to the next episode? Like, <laughs> You don't know who's gonna survive. And all, as I was saying, three episodes in, so far, as far as I can tell, there's only one objectively bad individual, I think. Everybody has bad in them. Everybody on the show is a little bad or crazy. But there's one person in particular so far that I'm like, well, that person's just a bad person. Oh, my God. Uh, who is it? I'm can you dying tell to us? know. Yeah. Kind of I can't give anything away. We can talk after. But my point is, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything for anybody because it's so much fun. But... Uh, was that a lot of fun for all of you to lean into that, to be able to lean on that that bad quality? Some more subtle than others. Some go really off the deep end. I mean, you were just saying in auditions they wanted to make sure you weren't an actual psychopath. Yeah. So, like, how much fun was that for you to play that up and have that time as this character? For me, it was so fun to, like, just play some a character who, like, was taking their space, you know? Just, like, not... No, no apologies playing just this like young queer character who's in a school and saying like, I am who I am and I'm gonna destroy you if you don't agree with me and if you don't support me. Well, first of all, that's so boring. But second of all, like you're so lame. And so it was really cool to just sort of redo high school a little bit for myself in terms of playing a character who has the like a sense of self that I was ever never able to have um, out of like fear and that sort of thing. I completely agree with that. Like, I have been using the word unapologetic a lot, which, uh, to describe Heather Chandler and how she lives her life, which I think is actually kind of something cliche to say. But I do think, as a woman, as women, like, we tend to apologize too much all the time. And especially as, like, a fat woman, I've always been like, oh, I don't want to take up as much space. I'm going to try to shrink myself and, and just, like, make everybody around me comfortable. And to be able to wear those clothes and strut down the hallway and to have an amazing supporting cast who endowed us with so much power. I mean, we only look powerful because of their jaws on the floor and their sweet little eyes looking at us. I mean, they were just incredible. We don't know any of their names. Yeah, like whoever they are, you know, whatever they are. No. Yeah, that's the power though, doesn't it? That's I was like, I'm sorry, who are you? No. Um, but no, they endowed us with so much power. So it was, it was just, I mean, it was totally thrilling. And like, there were times where, I, it, not that it got to my head, but there were times where I was like, I am invincible like i can do anything you know and then i drive home in my like rental car and get to my apartment and i'm like no i'm not heather chandler though that's the thing you know that's the that's the shame but it was invincible driving this dodge a little less invincible no no literally it's a nissan note like not not plugging or anything it was like the tiniest it was a toy car basically it was the cheapest one they had Jasmine, yeah, I think I the thing that I most enjoyed playing a mean girl was why is she a mean girl? Like, yeah. what is it that she's going through that is making her act this way towards other people? And that was fun, fun in that exploration because Heather McNamara was kind of the least fleshed out character in the original. So getting to explore more of who she is and, and Jason was great. He kind of gave me free reign and was like, yeah, 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 do that. Um, was really fun. Why is she a mean girl? You know, not just because she's a bully, but why? What's going on? And we got a great window into that early on in the show too. It's yeah. pretty, it's pretty jaw drop. It's pretty crazy. Uh, um, <laughs> so you mentioned a lot of stuff to unpack there, but the uh, the idea of redoing high school. Uh, I'm myself. Uh, I'm like 15 some odd years removed from high school at this point, and it is another freaking planet. Like yeah. when I look at it, and I try to even wrap my head around what's happening. Like, what what was that like? How is it surreal embodying this this already uh, crazy version of high school, but this heightened reality of it as well? Uh, how does that feel uh, for you going through, and how different? Obviously, very different, I'd imagine, for some of you from what you remember. Right. I'm gonna put you on the spot, Grace. I see you thinking. Yeah, you looked way too ready, so I'm going to give you a second to think it over. Um, I'm going to force... I mean, it it was bizarre in a way because while we are playing these characters that are, you know, in, in such a large sense, kids, um, they're almost written to be like little adults that are having such 
extreme emotions and, and terrible experiences in a way that they're just so ready to kill each other, you know? Um, so it was crazy. It, it was a crazy experience to play to play that these teens that in a lot of ways are like little adults and and a big thing that we explore in the show. The reason why it's like that is because the actual adults are so not present. I mean, they are like existing on a different plane. Um, they're just they don't listen. They don't hear. Um, so it was really cool to explore that. Um, my high school experience was much different, <laughs> my actual one. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was really cool to dig into that. Yeah. Sir, what were you about to say, James? I mean, yeah, I don't know. It was sort of like what Melanie said, sort of what just Grace touched on. But, um, you know, I think all of us, when we look back on moments that we had in high school, we're like, oh, I wish I had handled that differently. Or like, I wish I'd just been cooler, or I wish I'd been like more on top of it. And getting to revisit that period in time, um, I was I'm was obviously very different from the character that I'm playing in high school, and continue to be that way, fortunately. Uh, but he, yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> he, you know, there's like Mel said, there's something nice about being able to revisit um, that period, having like. Somet well, sometimes, especially for JD, all of the control and all of the power. Um, and yeah, and especially re-examining like things that in the, in, in the moment seemed normal, but like then when you look back on them, you know, like I had some teachers that, or some like administrators that really when you compare them against the inept, uncaring adults in our series, they're not that like different. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice to get to sort of like revisit that relationship and that interaction in a way where, you know, we obviously as the characters we're playing get to have a little more fun. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Got it. What are you going to say? Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll go. It was... <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, no, I forget. No, no. It was, uh, no, it was, it was a deeply personal uh, reflection for me um, you know, in trying to, uh, for a lot of my life, I feel like I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people being like, you know, you're so confident and, and talking especially about body positivity and, and being plus size. It's like, I always feel like the feedback I got over life was like, you're so confident as if like, how is that possible looking the way that you look? And I, and I never really thought about it. I was like, I don't know. I've just always kind of been confident, you know? And then in analyzing Heather Chandler and being like, what makes her confident? Why does she act this way? I was like, oh, she just realizes that her environment is dog eat dog. And she's like, no, I don't really want to be eaten. Like, I want to be the dog on top. Uh, and if that's the choice, eat or be eaten, like, I choose to eat. Uh, I said this at the TCAs, and it's a hilarious metaphor for her. But um, she's like, I'm going to eat. And literally, I was like, oh, that's exactly what happened to me. Like, that's totally my childhood. I look, I grew up in a society where I looked around, none of the images looked like me, none of the people who were being worshipped looked like me, and I was like, oh, crap, this is doggy dog. I'm going to come in and tell you you love me before you have a chance to push me in the corner and tell me I'm not cool. And that's exactly what Heather's doing. She's not doing it in the way I did it. I mean, I wasn't quite as cutthroat. <laughs> I had, like, my mean girl streak, but um, it just made me understand myself a lot better and having that perspective and be able to... Look back Here. retrospectively. Matt. Um, <laughs> like, literally, it's so rude to, like... Your Melanie is making a great point. Like, I'm in your <laughs> tears, okay? Punctuated very much that's so. It, that's it. Anyway, I guess he wants me to shut up. I should go to... Maybe no, I should. that's one of... That's like, keep going, is what that is. That's incredible. I will. You're, see, you're reaching see, him. This you're is motivating. a real-life moment where we He's wish building we could his like confidence or her confidence. I don't know who it is. But you're 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 fostering confidence upstairs. I'm glad upstairs. we're all using it. You know, you're we're all using it. But anyway, <laughs> I, that truly I, is yes. the end of my speech. She <laughs> she taught me a lot about yeah. myself, and I feel like I got a little dose of like psychotherapy working on her, which was great. Well, that's that's the thing that, uh, and I'll just for my own little soapbox for a second, I'll address the haters very quickly because I don't like to address haters. That's one of them right there, right? Yeah, right. Is that um? It, this is why I say wait and watch the show because one of the things that was so refreshing and so enjoyable and so much fun to see was what your 
portrayal of these characters was how strong was the confidence. Of course, it's it's not uh, it's heightened reality. It's television, right? So there is a little bit more cutthroat, but that's also kind of fun. That's why it's a fun television show. But to see characters that I think are traditionally, uh, you know, uh, ca- marginalized people that are casted as nerds or awkward or whatever, to see them in positions of power and to see the confidence, that was really exciting and refreshing to me. And I really enjoyed that take and I really enjoyed that ride. And I think also, too, when I said earlier, complex characters, you find out why they're that way. Yeah. You find out these are people. These aren't just stereotypes. These aren't just things that you've uh, picked out that you've seen. These are these are real people and real characters. And you guys do a phenomenal job of of building these characters and and showing us this world, even in its crazy heightened state with its super dark comedy. There's a lot of very strong performances, and you do a phenomenal job. That's my speech. Thank so you. congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. And thank you for thank this you. show. Uh, there's so much I wanted to talk about. I didn't get to. The fashion is out of freaking control. We got to go to audience Q and A. We're gonna do that. But I gotta know. Did you take any of the uh, clothes from the set? Did you steal anything? Yes. We tried. So yeah. I stole nothing, and yeah. I want that on the record. I stole nothing. <laughs> got it. Okay. One stole nothing. One tried. Anybody else? I got a jacket. You got a jacket. Good they for you. made me do something extra that I didn't want to do, and so I said, give me the jacket. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. And really? uh, then so I got the jacket. I grabbed some Adidas things. Adidas, call me. We should, you know, do business. I that. Oh, and I, I got the pussy skirt from episode one. I did get the pussy skirt as a wrap gift. So I have that. Anything? Did you grab anything? Um, I can't say what my wrap gift was because it's a huge spoiler. Okay. But yeah, yeah I just... I just took things, which is the JD way. Oh, yeah. Just kidding. They already thought. Everybody in production, breathe deep. It's Rip fine. I'm joking. White on the, Seriously, on the, I did take things. Remember how we, on the very last day, they were filmed, I think it was the last day, one of the last days, um, they were filming stuff outside, and James and I intentionally went into the stage. All the lights were off. We took, like, bags, and we just took things. Not anything that was, like, you know, they were ripped. Mementos. Or, yeah, like okay. little, like it wasn't like stealing, but it was just like a can, like I a think candle. That, like, taking things, things like, without asking if you could take them when they belong to other people is the definition of stealing. I, I wasn't there. Nobody's missing it. Throw well, up, no Veronica. Like okay. well, well, I think you earned it. Yeah, I mean, I half that stuff it. I'd like bled It's a good metaphor for the show on. that they stole things. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, there's one objectively bad person I've identified so far, so maybe i got to change the numbers. Uh, guys, thank you so, so, so much for thank hanging you. out with me. Thank you for putting thank up you. with that. Let's take some questions from the audience real quick. we got some microphones out there. First one. Hi. Uh, I actually have an online question uh, from uh, Michelle. Uh, and it says, uh, if there was any other 80s movies that you would want to get uh, the Heather treatment for, which movie would it be? Um, like I guess the Breakfast Club I th- is kind of goes to my thought yeah. immediately, or any of those John Hughes movies um, are so great um, and kind of t- uh, timeless, and uh, you know. Is that every- everyone in on Breakfast Club? Is that Definitely. the is that the group answer? First thing that popped in my head. Yeah. yeah. We could all be in that remake. I would love to watch you if guys you're do this. more stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> so much fun. As an excuse, there's a reason to do it right there. Thank you, Michelle, for that question. We've got another one coming at us right here. Hi, uh, so I was a huge fan of the original Heather's movie. Um, I noticed that Shannon Doherty was in, in, in this one. Uh, what was it like working with her on set, and did she help out at all with giving uh, uh, tips on characters or the old original? Shannon um, is an icon uh, and an entertainment institution. She was as exactly as cool as you would expect her to be. She was so, so, so sweet. I had multiple very intense scenes with her um, in which I was usually just a mess. And she would just, you know, sit there patiently being a consummate professional, crushing all of her scenes. Every single line was a delight to be around backstage. She, you know, especially when, like, confronting the amount of hate that has come out before the show even airs, which makes no sense to me. Um, She's really given the show and each of us her blessing. Uh, so it's sort of like, if you have the approval of one of the original Heathers, I don't really understand what anyone else can have to say about it. Um, but yeah, she's a delight. I second that. <laughs> I mean, we, I saw her at, we were at the network premiere party, and I was like, because I hadn't had a lot of chances to chat with her, and so I just went up to be like, I'm such a huge fan, you know, and like have my fangirl moment. And she kind of like fangirled me back, being like, you're so good in the show. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> 
like, can I get that, uh, like, recorded so I can, like, play it before bed every night? No, really, it was, like, I was so moved by her generosity. She's very, very generous. That's amazing. Okay, we have time for, I believe, one more? we got one more question coming at us right here. Come on, Star Wars T-shirt. Hey, guys. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so I'm so excited for this reboot. It looks really, really cool. Um, I'm wondering that based on the original characters, which Heather are each of you? I'm Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would be Heather McNamara for sure. I don't know if I'm cool enough to be a Heather, to be perfect. No, you're not. You're not. That was immediate. Guess I really walked into that. Thanks, guys. You said it over. I'm... I'm I mean, I hate to admit it, but I'm definitely Heather Chandler. Like, definitely. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I'd like to say I'm a Veronica, but if I have to pick from the Heathers, I think I'd definitely be a Heather M, yeah. for sure. Don't you all think? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 I agree. Awesome. Well, uh, that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, well, no more time. we got to wrap it up. Guys, uh, this show, I can't say it enough. I, I really uh, felt like lucky to get a chance to see it before the rest of the world here. And I'm telling everybody out there, you, you got to check it out. It is uh, wrong card. Let's see. I wrote it down. There. March 7th. There it is. We got March 7th on the Paramount Network. That's uh, two weeks from tomorrow, I believe. So two Wednesdays from now. And we're going to, yeah, it's creeping up. We just went, oh, wow. It's closer than you thought. <laughs> Really put things in perspective right there. It's like, oh, man, it's happening. Well, uh, congratulations again, everybody. Please make some noise and join me in thanking the phenomenal cast of Heathers right here. Put it together.